It's been almost exactly two years, and finally, the pandemic is dissipating. We made our choices, we learned our lessons, and it's a new dawn. The spring equinox is coming, and it's a new season for the year 2022, and a new time for all of us to embrace new life, new opportunities, new abundance. And while we balance our care and genuine prayer for peace and the awareness of a world that still includes unthinkable tragedy and sorrow and even war, we also are grateful for how blessed we are. And so let us use this spring of 2022 to take everything that we've learned clear the past and move forward in gratitude for the freedom that we have, for the blessings of our lives, for the opportunity to come together again in community, online, and yes, in person. We are all part of the awakening world, and we all have the roles that we're playing as individuals and collectively. We are the imaginal cells finding each other to create a beautiful, incredible butterfly out of the old paradigm. So welcome to spring of 2022. Welcome to the awakening world. We come from the same Welcome everybody. It is a very sacred Sunday and we've got a beautiful, beautiful show. I am love coach Scott K. Thomas. I'm very excited uh, because it's been a powerful weekend so far and I want to welcome all of you that are in our Zoom room and I want to welcome everybody watching on Facebook. Thank you to John and Summer Raymer and the Sign Network for getting us out to as many as a hundred different Facebook groups and pages, including Unify. Welcome, everybody. And for those of you that are watching on Facebook or on Alan Steinfeld's YouTube or our YouTube channel, come on into our Zoom room uh, because it's easier for us to interact with you. Um, we're going to have some powerful ceremony, but we also always really enjoy interacting with all of you. So it's easy to come on into our Zoom room. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com globalpeacetribe.com and register. You're going to get the links to all of our shows and we look forward to having you join us on Friday nights, Saturday nights and Sunday mornings. So welcome. All right, so we are going to be connecting into this equinox time from several different cultural perspectives. Later on, we're going to hear from a Wiccan uh, and uh, all about how this is the Ostara day time. We are going to connect to the Shakti Love Warriors because my co-host and my just absolute beloved Larissa Stowe is here. Hi Larissa. Hello Scott. I'm grateful to be here with you and to be here with everyone on this yeah. morning. So grateful we get to start this new season with you and with your Shakti Love Warriors. Mm, me too. Me too. Thank you. And we're going to introduce Philip, who's going to lead a beautiful ceremony in a moment. But tell us a little bit about your cousin and what she's going to be offering. Well, my cousin is a, a feast for the eyes, a feast for the heart. She is an amazing soul. And if you've ever met, I like to say, you know, a lot of us want to become enlightened. But my cousin, and not in the evil way, she is and darkened let's say <laughs> and in the most beautiful way like she's very embodied um 
the darkness, meaning the fertile darkness of, of embracing her shadow, embracing the, the beauty of those aspects that maybe we might be uh, collectively a little more afraid of. She teaches us how to embrace all that we are. So she's a really powerful soul and she loves everything Wiccan. And so she's got quite a, a knowledge around the pagan holidays. And today she's going to be sharing with us a bit about Ostara. So I'm excited, you know, to share her with you all today. Beautiful. And we're also going to be connecting with the Shakti Love Warriors. So just a reminder, maybe share it with people. Most of our people know about the Shakti Love Warriors, but some of the people that are new, maybe watching on Unify, might not know about that. Shakti Love Warriors is an amazing group of beings that are from all different kind of walks of life, I would say. But everybody, what I've noticed like a thread is that everyone who is there seems to have gone through really intense things in life and rather than having those things calcify them everybody is about growth and connection and compassion so even though people in our group might see things differently in the world everyone is really committed to hearing each other to learning and growing together and pushing through misunderstandings and and so it's a really kind, compassionate community of support. A lot like, you know, it's a spiritual sangha online, I would say, of souls that are there to really love each other and support each other through wonderful times and through the harder challenges as well. So. Beautiful. Well, we're going to get a lot more, Larissa, a little bit later on. Um, thank you so much for being with us, Larissa. I love you so much. I love you so much, Scott. Mm. Taking that in. And again, welcome everybody. All right, I am putting the spotlight on Chief Philip Scott. And he's been on our Saturday Night Live show a few times. Um, in fact, he co hosted a wonderful uh, show with us. Um, but this is his first time on The Awakening World. So, welcome, Chief Philip. Let me just tell people a little bit about you. Um, he's had a really remarkable life. He's of mixed ancestry and has been struck by lightning not once, not twice, but three times. Remarkable. Um, and it really shows his extraordinary relationship to nature and to life. Um, Philip Scott has faithfully walked the native path for 40 years. He's learned from and been sanctioned by traditional medicine holy people, tribal spiritual leaders, wisdom keepers, and elders from several indigenous cultures. He annually does the sun dance in the Lakota tradition for over three decades. He's a ceremonial leader, a traditional healer, and he's been entrusted to share indigenous wisdom and medicine practices with our world, this contemporary world. And so I am grateful that he is with us to bring in a new season spring for most of us that are in the northern hemisphere but also um want to acknowledge uh especially on unify we have a lot of friends who watch on uh from new zealand and australia that are down under and for them of course it's the autumn equinox so philip is going to lead a powerful ceremony i want to invite everybody to really put aside any distractions and drop in um because this is going to be a very powerful experience for us Philip, thank you so much for being with us, and I'm turning it over to you. My pleasure, Scott. It's an honor to be with you, and thank you for the invitation to share with your listeners and for the people at large today. Allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm known as Shunko Wakansapa, which is Lakota for Black Horse. I'm a ceremonial leader in the Lakota tradition, as well as a Native American church. And I'm founder and director of Ancestral Voice Institute for Indigenous Lifeways, which is located here in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is home to the coastal Miwok, Ohlone, Pomo nations, as well as others who are the stewards of this particular area. We've had a really powerful confluence of forces occurring celestially right now. We've had the full moon, which occurred on Friday, 
And then we have the spring equinox here in the Northern Hemisphere. So it's a powerful time. It's a very potent time. It's a time of an examination of the darkness is within ourselves, the illumination that grandmother brings into that darkness, which is not negative, but is the ground and, and the awakening of, um, of ourselves as human beings. Also, it's time for us to remove the cloak of winter for many individuals here within the Northern Hemisphere. And of course, um, for our counterparts in the South, their shift of season as well. The winter has been a challenging time for many of us. We have been witness and experiencing the ripples of war. Well, we still are embedded here within this uh, pandemic, although it's beginning to abate and wane, but nevertheless, we still must exercise vigilance and to take care of each other. Similarly, we are still beset by this global catastrophe, this climate where Everything is warming. And so there's this inflammation that is occurring on the earth, but also that inflammation that's occurring within ourselves and often in our interactions. So there has been considerable loss, considerable conflict and challenges that has been happening. And so this is our time at this potent juncture, if you will, this, this confluence of celestial forces to be able to let go of the heaviness and the challenges that we've been encountering as a species, but also individually in our own personal lives. So before we embark into this ceremony, it's important for us to invoke the spirits and the ancestors to hear our hearts and our prayers today. So I'm gonna invite all of you to cleanse yourself off. If you reside in North America, for example, to use sage. If you reside in say Central America, you can use copal. South America, Palo Santo, Europe, rosemary. You can also use water if you don't have any of these plant medicines. So clearly cleanse yourself off, washing your hands, taking it over your head, heart, your belly. Cleanse yourself off very well. If you happen to be sitting by an altar, also to cleanse off the altar. Wherever it is that you reside upon this earth, and I send a, a welcome to each and every one for being on this call with us today, whether virtually in the Zoom room or through Facebook. And I extend a greeting to you as a relative, a fellow human being, and journey you're on this path. So I invite you to close your eyes, to breathe deeply into your body. We invoke the ancestors to be with us for our ceremony today in honor of this shift of seasons, move from the time of the winter of dreaming in the Northern Hemisphere into the emergence of spring, the blossoming and the unfolding and the expansion that happens in this season.
Now that we've invoked the ancestors and the spirits to be present with us in our ceremony, we can speak of sacred matters. I want to take a moment to send a prayer, a remembrance of the people of Ukraine right now. Oh, what's transpiring in that country is very similar to what happened here in North America with the arrival of the colonizers, with this antiquated notion of colonization and conquest and acquisition and this name of manifest destiny to push west in uh, trying to exterminate anyone or anything that stands in the way of what's called progress. Right? And yet we also, as a consequence of what's happening in this time, beginning to see a solidarity amongst nations that we understand that this notion of war is obsolete and that we must come together and band together in solidarity and in peace. And so uh, I pray that there can be this continuation of a, a unification of nations against this notion of tyranny and these antiquated ways of colonized conquest and acquisition, which serves no one and yet continues to engender greater pain and suffering for everyone. Also in this time, though we are beginning to segue away from the pandemic, it's really important to understand that this elder hasn't disappeared. This virus, this teacher is still here. And if we really reflect upon the past two plus years of the arrival of this elder, this uh, grandparent here to this earth, that Part of the teachings have been to learn how to take care of each other, to learn how to respect boundaries, as well as to safeguard one another. And I pray that we may continue this and continue to exercise vigilance in this way as we proceed forward to continue to make proper relationship with this elder. And also to understand that we must begin to embody a way of living in this world that will safeguard and protect our mother, the earth, that we no longer continue to entertain these notions of unsustainable living upon her. We notice this escalation of this heat, of this intensity, this inflammation that I spoke about. And it's also, there's a correlation here because as a consequence of this inflammation in the earth, there's an inflammation within ourselves. And it finds its way and its expression through violence and aggression and anger. And so we need to find ways that we can begin to cool this earth as well as to cool whatever aggression and violence is within ourselves. So today it's time for us to let go. It's time for us to take a moment to recapitulate and reflect upon all that's transpired in the season that we were in here in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, the winter time, the time of dreaming. Perhaps you have received and been blessed by many dreams in this time of hibernation and introspection and reflection. But perhaps you've also experienced tremendous loss. Maybe you are encountering grief over the impermanences that you endured. And so this is a time for us to let go of this heaviness, this weight, right, of the human condition, to let go of the conflict, to let go of the confusions, perhaps the irritations, the indignations, the anger, the frustration that has characterized our season. And so we're going to utilize the medicine of song again. And I'm going to actually sing a song that my Lakota mother would often sing, she would rise before the dawn, before the sun would peak above the horizon. And she would sing this song. The rough translation is essentially that, you know, creator, I've been having a challenging time in my life. But I know that through this red road, this sacred way of life, the Chanupa Wakan, the sacred pipe, as we call it, 
there will be a chance for me to prevail. So I'm going to sing this song a cappella for you. I'm going to ask you to take your hand to your heart. I ask you to close your eyes, to breathe deeply. To reflect upon what transpired in your season, as well as in the last moon cycle. So from the last full moon until now. So as I said, it's a, it's a potent confluence of forces that are allowing for this profound release as we move into not only the next moon cycle, but into this next season of emergence for many of us. And so as I sing this song, I'm gonna invite you to pray aloud and whatever your mother tongue may be, right? In the Lakota language, prayer is known as wochekia, which is to cry. And so for me, prayer is an unfettered heart speak. We open our heart and allow us to have a communication with the spirits, with the creator, with the earth herself. And as you articulate whatever your challenges have been, there's an opportunity for you to let go, to release what no longer serves you. And you may be inspired to weep as a consequence and that those tears are a liberation, a healing, a purification as well. And so you'll take your hands to your heart, close your eyes, and genuinely express from your heart what it is that you need to let go of, what your challenges have been, what you've endured, the losses that you've encountered. As I said, the frustration, the challenges, perhaps the conflicts, the misunderstandings, right? the opportunities that we have for profound learning as human beings on this journey. And I will now sing the song that my Lakota mother would sing every morning. <clears throat> Wakan tanka shemalayo, 
Emako kijelo eo chanom pa kile leo ha ho ye hi wa yelo Take a deep breath. Feel that release, that surrender. And once again, I invite you to take a plant medicine from the region, from where you dwell, where you reside, and cleanse yourself again. And again, if you don't have any of the sacred plant medicines that are used to cleanse from your region, you can always use water. Whether it be the smoke of the plant medicine or the water, just wash your hands. Take it over your head, your heart, your belly. Right? This, this smoke, this air is intelligent just as that water these elementals are sentient beings. And I pray that you feel lighter, that you feel a sense of relief from the articulation of your hardships and your challenges, to let it go, to allow the spirits to doctor you, to acknowledge the challenges as well as the gifts and the learnings that you received in this in this potent time that we're in this challenging time this opportunity that we have individually and collectively to awaken i'm going to invite you now to obtain some water maybe a glass of water if you don't have some already and i'll just take a moment to use my flute and to pray with my flute while you acquire some water for the next section of our ceremony here. And then once you have the water, please return. Now that you have the water, I ask you to take that water to your heart. And I'm going to sing another set of songs. I'm going to sing some water songs because water carries memory. And so you'll have an opportunity to articulate a prayer. In this case, a prayer for your life to plant seeds of intention, which you can nurture and nourish in the spring. And so as you pray into this water, I invite you to pray for what you desire to manifest, your dreams and your aspirations. I also ask you to pray for your family, for your friends, for those who are suffering, for those who are challenged that you know. Prayers for the people of Ukraine, for the cessation of conflict in this world. I ask you to pray for the indigenous nations of this world for the water protectors, the earth protectors, the fire protectors, the air protectors, all those who put their lives on the line to ensure that these sacred elementals continue to remain undefiled. I ask you to pray also for those who put their life on the line to ensure that these ceremonies can be preserved for future generations. Prayers for the children, for our elders as well. Right? 
for Syria and Sudan, yes, for, for this world that is beset with conflict, right? That we can find internal peace as well as external peace. Because when we can achieve internal peace, then the, the wars in the world will cease, truly. Because we will have that reflection looking back upon us, right? So it's time for us to curtail the internalized waging of war within ourselves and the strife that we have in our relationships with others. So take this water and hold it to your heart. And I'm gonna sing a water song and ask you to pray, to plant seeds in this water, which we will then imbibe so that the waters that carry that prayer, that heart, then can flow and coalesce and merge with the waters within yourself so that every step you take is the prayer that you are articulating to emerge into this new season. Here we go. Again, pray aloud. Maybe you also be inspired to once again weep, but this time a weeping for what's potential and possible for us to achieve as human beings, to awaken, to become instruments in the relief of suffering in this world, to liberate ourselves from the shackles of conditioning and patterning and reactivity. Here we go. <clears throat> Holy water, Holy water, Now that you have infused your prayers into this water, I invite you to drink this water, to feel those prayers now flowing within yourself, coalescing and merging with the waters within you to become one so that the prayers that you've expressed from your heart that you have now articulated in this shift of seasons are ones that you can walk in the world. As I say, it's time to put moccasins on our prayers. It's time for us to act together in solidarity to allow this world to become the dream and the place that we want it to be for everyone, for all of our relations. Well, continue to pray for all of us, all human beings in this world this time. Please acknowledge and remember the indigenous inhabitants upon where you dwell, and the, the lands that you occupy, the challenges and the intergenerational trauma that they've endured through the boarding schools and elsewhere. You know, continue to have a prayer upon your lips and your heart for them, as well as for all people in this world who are suffering at this time. 
I truly believe that we are on a precipice, on a threshold here, and the, the global outcry against this tyranny and this violation of innocent people, that we are beginning to understand that we are, as we say in Lakota, mitakwe oyasin, we are all connected, all related. And so from here, we can begin to build a different world for the betterment of all beings upon this earth, our planet. And it's critical that we take care of her, that we put our lives on the line to protect her as well. To conclude for our ceremony today, it is important for us to have gratitude well, gratitude is the wings of prayer. It allows our prayers to take flight, to be grateful for all that we've encountered, both the adversities as well as the blessings and the sweetness. And so as we conclude our ceremony, I'm going to share a song of gratitude. And I invite you again to take your hand to your heart and to pray for all the blessings that you've received, all the abundance, all the joy, as well as all of the challenges, which are the vehicles for the springboards of our awakening, as I mentioned, right? When we can step into the fire and allow that fire to transform us, to rise like the phoenix, right? That it's, that's what tempers our spirit and helps to galvanize us and temper us to endure what is to come. So with this, I also express my gratitude to each and every one of you for your presence, your participation, and your prayers. And again, gratitude to you, Scott, for the invitation to be able to share with you and to initiate this new season with all of you. of you for your presence on this call today in our virtual hoop. I really encourage you to place moccasins on your prayers. It's time for us to act for the manifestation of our intentions in this world for the betterment of all of our relations at this time. So I thank you for the, the privilege and the honor to share with each and every one of you today. I wish you many blessings for you and your loved ones at this time. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Let's all take a moment. And I, a lot of people watching on Unify Facebook, let's all just send our love and our gratitude to Philip for creating this beautiful sacred space, holding space and giving us the opportunity to really connect in to our prayers, to Mother Earth. Thank you for all that you've shared, Philip. And 40 years of dedication to helping our planet to awaken. You truly have been one of the great walkers of the awakening world. Thank you so much. 
But uh, I've I've put into the chat box um, how people can reach him. You can reach him by email or phone. He's very, very accessible. Um, and for anybody in the Bay Area, he leads incredible retreats and day-long ceremonies. In fact, he's going up to my favorite mountain, Mount Tamalpais, this afternoon to lead a ceremony. So definitely make sure you reach out to him if you're in the Bay Area to go to his local events. And if you want private counseling or support, email or call him. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank you. My pleasure. God, wish you many blessings for you and your organization and the work that you're doing in the world as well. Uh, I will not be able to remain on the call as I have to get ready for this uh, ceremony that we'll be conducting on the top of Mount Tamalpais for the uh, an honoring of the So wishing you many Please, blessings. Yep. I just request that you take a deep breath from me. Mount Tamalpais, which that literally means good spirits. That's the Miwok for good spirits, uh, is why I moved to the Bay Area. I fell in love with that mountain. So take a breath for me up there, would you please? I will be most honored to do that. In fact, it'll take many breaths up there for you. Awesome, thank you. All right. God bless you, Philip. Thank you so much. Oh. Larissa, before we kind of drop into Shakti Love Warriors and Wiccan reality, what stood out for you in Philip's uh, experience this morning? You know, when we did, honestly, when we brought our prayers in um, into our water and recognizing that we are earth, you know, we are water, um, all the elements live within us. So to honor the water and the memories, the, the visions, the dreams that we infuse, our water that we drink, but not only the water that we drink, but the water within our bodies as well. Mm -hmm. That felt really powerful, and I was thinking, what a blessing, you know, that he gave us that opportunity to feel, put our awareness into the water, but also put our awareness, you know, into our own body and the water within our body that is highly programmable, yes. <laughs> highly <laughs> sensitive, right? Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. I also really appreciate just remembering all the different places where there's pain going on. Syria, Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia. And, you know, I also have a, I want us to remember to keep prayers for the, for the Russian soldiers, yeah. not the soldiers that are there to do harm, but those poor kids who thought that they were on a training exercise. And all of a sudden, they're like, what the heck are we doing here? Uh, I know that you and I have both worked with enough Vietnam veterans to know how devastating it is to an entire lifetime when uh, when you're so young and you find yourself in war and you think you're a patriot and then you discover that you're in a place that you have no business being. Yeah. So I have a lot of compassion for those poor kids also. I do too. That was like you're mentioning, you know, the, the Russian soldiers that didn't know. And I would also say all the Russian people right now, you know, as well that that are I think there's a, a generalization that happens with some people of lumping everybody, like all the, the, the actions of the leaders, you know, globally putting all those those people in that category. And I just I really feel also for the Russians that are being cut off um, from the world, their 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 livelihoods. I don't you know, there's a lot of that going on as well, where the world is going to to all of Russia. So we're, there's suffering on so many levels <laughs> that's happening and for us to understand that this is really about all of us having compassion for everybody, everyone, you know, <clears throat> everyone needs compassion right now. A reminder to all of our friends to please keep muted, by the way. Um, uh, when I hear noises, I can find you, but it takes a moment to find out where that's coming from. So try and keep yourselves muted. Um, but we love hearing from you in the chat box, and then we'll probably open it up at the very end to some conversation. Um, and Larissa has a very special guest. I'm going to remove myself and let you introduce our special guest. Yay. Thank you. Um, I would love to introduce my beautiful cousin, Jules. Uh, she's going to be 
sharing with us her knowledge of this incredible day, Ostara. And Jules has specifically, she brings a transmission today, not only of speaking about it, but she brings a transmission being one who practices Wiccan and um, celebrates the pagan holidays. And she really embodies this, this love and understanding of the earth and of honoring Mama Gaia. So I'm excited to share her all with you today as she enlightens us about Ostara. Hey, hello everyone. Can you hear me first of all? Yes, you're a little windy, but we can hear you. All right, I will try to project for you all. It is very windy here. We are literally feeling spring blowing into our mists. <laughs> so thank you so much for having me. And I think that this is just such a wonderful opportunity to share. And uh, first off, I will actually start with um, correcting. I'm not actually a Wiccan practice practitioner myself. Um, the Wiccan tradition is a very specific sect of paganism. Um, I more practice just broad Celtic paganism in general. And so what I'm going to share with you today is going to be a bit more of a broad sense of Ostara. There is very specific traditions associated with the Wiccan tradition. But um, yeah, we're just going to go with this. So Ostara actually began uh, originally in the Germanic tradition. So over in Germany, there was this wonderful little fairy tale that I like to tell that has to do with Ostara. And Ostara is this wonderful, wonderful, beautiful holiday that celebrates the spring equinox. There are so many folklore stories around this time of year. In fact, there are so many holidays in general around this time of year because celebrations you know, used to and still are centered around harvest seasons. So when we think of spring, we think of this ending of winter, coming out of the darker portion of the year into the lighter portion of the year. We've made it through the winter, we've survived, right? Because survival is so, so important. And now we've come into the part of the year where we're going to be able to plant seeds and grow food and be able to replenish ourselves to prepare for the next dark season of the year that we're going to face. So right now, during this time period, we have, like for instance, today is the celebration Nowruz, which is the Persian New Year. So we have a celebration of spring there and rebirth. And also we have this time of year, the Holy, Holy Festival. We celebrate the same thing because throughout the world, we are collectively as human beings, experiencing the revitalization that comes with spring and it's this amazing amazing experience that we can have all together as a hum as humanity so in the Germanic tradition the julia julia i'm coming in for a minute the wind noise is really bad okay so wondering if you can either um uh I assume that you're just going straight into your into your phone. If you can somehow protect it from the wind, because we want to really hear what you're having to say, but the wind is really getting in the way of that. Um, okay. How about I go ahead and grab my headset? Does that sound that good? is a very good idea. Grab okay. your headset. I'm going to mute right, my I'm gonna go back. and then I'm going to go grab that. The wind was not like this when we were doing our test, but... Apparently. We appreciate the nature spirits being with us. And I've, I've gone back to Larissa. All right. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, Larissa, let's use this as an opportunity to talk about the Weevolution. Can you please tell our group a little bit more about the Weevolution? And I'll also direct them to the Shakti Love Warrior. Absolutely. Well, I... I can imagine that everybody is starting to, to sense and who is on this Zoom right now has a deeper understanding of the Weevolution than maybe all the people who are tuning in via Unify right now and other places. 
but the weevolution is what we are all being called to do right now, which is rather than feeling the divine on the outside of us, this is the time to completely embody the divine, like to own the divine within ourselves and know that we are the ones that have that ability to transform ourselves with love and compassion and also with the world. And when we embody that love completely, then we link arms and hands with each other in a unified vision of how can we make this world a place that reflects that compassion and that love? How do we bring heaven that we perceive is out there and somewhere else, how do we actually bring that into our own bodies, into this life, and then together, rather than through the eyes of competition, through the eyes of collaboration and a unified vision of what can we do now? How can we as a collective walk forward powerfully to create our vision of heaven on earth right now? And rather than planting our seeds into places of things that we actually don't want, which in the past a lot of us, you know, put a lot of our awareness on things that we don't want. We focus on what brings us anxiety. We focus on the, the, the struggles and the people that we don't agree with and the agendas that we don't agree with. But what in, if we were to instead of planting our seeds in places that don't nourish us, what if we were to plant our seeds of consciousness into the places that do serve us powerfully? And that's what, you know, the Weevolution is about. It's, it's about a shift in paradigm of our, of our consciousness. It's an up-leveling of consciousness of seeing the responsibility that we have with our thoughts, with where we put our energy in life. So, and I, I really see it happening. You know, we are waking up to this. I think we, um, we're having many more conversations about the we rather than just the me. It's like, okay, how can we collaborate in ways with one another that shows our unified vision and that when there's strife and things are falling apart between people, rather than just pushing those people to the side, walking away as if those are the others, that's them, and this is us. It's like, how can we actually have curiosity and compassion and empathy um, to continue to, to connect with those and that we don't always agree with like how can we get through this how can we find common ground that is what is being asked of us because this us versus them isn't working it hasn't worked for thousands upon thousands of years and what's happening on our planet right now again you know that we see in all these different places it's people that are disagreeing with the way things are done and it's a leading from the mind rather than from the heart, from heart-centered awareness. So if we can have more compassion, um, more curiosity, more empathy, <laughs> more acceptance for people who are different than we are, and play, find ways to play with each other, then we're going to create the world that we envision. Beautiful. I, I want to acknowledge all the comments coming in. I'm not going to read two, which is to acknowledge all of you that are writing. Jeffrey Colebrook, one of our regulars, writes, our love evolution leads to our revolution. And I have put uh, into the chat box uh, where you can join Shakti, the Shakti Love Warriors. It's a beautiful, beautiful group. Um, and so we're going to take a look at that. And then from Unify, uh, Joni writes, I totally agree. We need to have compassion for everyone right now. So thank you for that. And again, you can go to the Shakti Love Warriors um, uh, on the Facebook page, uh, which I've put in. And uh, we are really, really excited to have the Shakti Love Warriors with us right now. Uh, we're streaming on that page as well as 
about a hundred other Facebook pages. There it is. Um, <clears throat> here's a Shakti Lab. Ah, where is it? Um, I will bring it up in a moment. I apologize. I do think that Julia, also known as Jules, um, <laughs> <laughs> let's hear. Let's hear how you sound now. All right. Do I sound better? Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. And also, miraculously, as soon as I went and got my headset and came out here, the wind quieted down. <laughs> <laughs> and because I, <laughs> I have to say that, you know, you say that you were sharing that you're not specifically from the Wiccan tradition, but to me, you're the witchiest person I know. And you wear your hats and you celebrate that you embody <laughs> perhaps not the the dogmatic aspect, but you fully embody, you know, and celebrate your, your witchiness, so to speak. Yes. Yes. And, and witch is not a term that is specific to the Wiccan tradition. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So the Wiccan tradition is very specific. You know, they have their, their own um, ways of, of doing things. They have their own folklore that's revolved around the, the year, the wheel of the year. And uh, for me, I'm a self-practicing witch there okay yes. thank you yes thank you for that clarification <laughs> yes so absolutely um so i don't follow the specific wiccan tradition and so i won't speak on that but i will speak on the uh, the pagan traditions that i have incorporated into my own personal witchcraft because i i do identify as a witch you know what it, what is a witch a witch is just an energy mover right that's what we do we we harness those frequencies and we dive in and uh, witchcraft has to do with this deep deep rooted connection with the earth and drawing our our revitalization from it and mm. so that is just such a beautiful thing for me and ostara is actually one of my favorite pagan sabbats there are eight pagan sabbats throughout the wheel of the year and they tend to be celebrated either on the equinoxes or um in between in between phases right because the in between is just as important as the now right we always have to think about the in between phases from transitioning into one phase to the other so ostara is a celebration of the spring equinox we have now officially as of this morning transitioned from winter into spring and it's this beautiful beautiful celebration of life and just to kind of rehash what i was saying a little bit before this is a wonderful time of year where we are transitioning from the darker portion of the year into the lighter portion of the year where you know in winter it's cold a lot of a lot of celebrations throughout the world are centered around harvest seasons right because that is the way of life that is the way of existence we rely on things like the weather and the sun to support us as we grow our own food so that we can survive and nourish our bodies so it is so important to during these particular times of the year to have that gratitude for what the earth and what the the weather is giving us because it's literally giving us life and ostara is a beautiful beautiful holiday it has origins in the dramatic tradition and there are so many fun folkloric stories i'm just going to share one um a dramatic folklore story that i really really like that has to do with the origins that ostara has with what we commonly associate now easter so there are a lot of there are a lot of holidays that coincidentally have pagan organ uh, origins that we just don't always realize we don't always think about so you know for many of us not all of us but for many of us we grew up celebrating the holiday easter and we got very excited about the easter bunny coming and delivering eggs and you know for some people it is a celebration of you know christ and him, with him coming back to life so once again there's that symbolism with rebirth right we have passover during this time and we also have a number of other holidays during this time because as a humanity we love to celebrate this particular time of the year i, I mentioned it already but today is Nowruz, which is the persian new year so happy Nowruz to everybody 
And also during this time of year, we have Holy. So we, this commonality of celebrating it. So I would like to tell you a little story about the German goddess of spring. And I'm not going to pronounce her name correctly because, uh, well, I don't speak a German, but I will try for you all. Um, I believe it's uh, Jostre. Jostre. Yeah, it sounds very similar to Ostara. And the word is spelled with an E. Kind of reminds you of, the, of an egg when I look at it. <laughs> but so the spring, the goddess of spring, one day was walking through the forest and she found a bird, a bird that had been injured and frozen during the dead of winter. And the goddess took compassion on this bird. And to save its life, she turned it into a hare. And that hare was able to jump and run and live longer than it ever could have as a bird. And it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the bird was, the bird that had been turned into the hare was so grateful. And yet it was sad. It was sad that in the process of saving its life, the goddess had taken away everything that made it a bird, who it was. And hearing this, the goddess took compassion. And she granted it the ability to lay eggs for one day out of the year, which would be Ostara. And this is where we have that tradition of the Easter Bunny, right? It comes in, it brings eggs. It's like, why would you associate eggs with the Easter Bunny? Well, that's one of the reasons. And there are many, many versions of this story. There's many, ver many stories like I would... I definitely invite you to go online and read some because they're so beautiful. But the reason why there's also a huge association with the hair and eggs is because they are symbols of fertility. The egg, I think that's pretty obvious, right? Life is birthed from the egg. You know, we have the egg within us and we grow life within it. And the hair is a literal <laughs> symbolism of spring, right? We, we think of bunny rabbits and their amazing ability to procreate very, very quickly and just revitalize an entire ecosystem. It's absolutely amazing. So we have that kind of symbolism and we celebrate it all the day, all the time. There are traditions of coloring eggs that centered around this idea that coloring eggs yellow would be a way to bring forth more sunlight to help the crops. You know, it was this hope of, okay, I'm going to take this, this, uh, this symbolism, this, this egg that symbolizes rebirth and life. And also I'm going to attach the symbolism of the sun, right? This, this round object that we're going to color yellow and we're going to basically use it as a petition like, hello, earth, please give us some sun, give us some crops. We need to live and we need to revitalize ourselves after a long winter of struggling. And I think that's my favorite part of this holiday is the fact that we are transitioning from the darker portion of the year into the lighter portion of the year. And the intense significance around that is just amazing to me. Because if you think about the darker portion of the year, the colder portion of the year, what do people typically do? We typically go inwards, we go into our houses. That's what our exterior body is, is asking of us, is to really go inwards. But it extends so much further than just what we're doing on the outside. We're not just going indoors more. We're not just spending more time near our heart, near our family. We're also doing it internally, right? That's the portion of the year when we are less distracted by the things outside. We're going to less festivals or we're going to less activities. And instead, we have the time to really sit with ourselves and those that we're closest to. Thank and you, Kazi. <laughs> Kazi, I just wanted to, I, I want to thank you for all that you're sharing. And we're coming up close to the 1111 11 mark. It's it's 1108 right now. So I want to give everybody a little highlight that doesn't know about what we're doing on Shakti Love Warriors um, about the mantra. So just to give them a little snippet, we're going to be diving into 
the Adi Shakti Mantra coming up here for 11 minutes and we invite you all to join us. The, we've been doing this mantra practice since January 11th and we're going to be doing it through March 31st which is 80 days as a, a group doing the Adi Shakti Mantra which is specifically for um, raising the Kundalini in the body so yes, embodying our divinity, saying yes to the, our divinity, and then activating that to rise within, to help us to learn and receive guidance inside out, um, to activate our, our full, the full goddess and the God within ourselves. So we're gonna be doing that for 11 minutes today, and cuz you're gonna lead us with doing the Adi Mantra first, which is bowing to the divinity within ourselves and all around us before we do 11 minutes. Yes? Yes, we got it. Um, and Jules, we're still getting wind noise. Remember that if you can cup your hand over the microphone, mm -hmm. not touching the microphone, but just kind of protecting it from the wind, th that probably will make it a lot easier because we're still, uh, when the wind comes up, we still get that noise that gets in the way. Okay, perfect. All right, so we are going to go ahead and chant. We are going to be chanting Om Namo Gurudev Namo. I bow to the divinity that is within me three times. And then at the end of those three chants, we're going to hold our breath with our intention, what we want to bring forth into this new season where we have the ability to bring into fruition everything that we've internalized during this darker portion. So deep breath in. Guru Dev Namo Guru Dev Namo Guru for our own meditation. And as we chant, think about what kinds of seeds you wish to plant in your life for this season. What have you internalized that you can now integrate and grow into this reality? Holding that breath as long as you can. Holding that. And when you're ready, releasing. Hey, Larissa, would you like to start the our chanting, our mantra? Thank you, Kazi. I see I was muted. We we're chanting Om I'm Hreem Shreem Sa Adi Shakti Nama. Thank you, beloveds. Let us begin. Oh, my, my. 
Shrim Sari Shakti Nama Om Rim 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 Shrim Sari Shakti Nama Om 
ma ping shing sa al shakti na ma 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 ma ping shing sa al shakti
Thank you. Ah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, beloveds. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cuzzy, for co creating and bringing us that wisdom, and Scott for creating such a beautiful place for all of us to commune together from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, beloveds, for diving into that deep inner space of devotion within your, within your heart. We are all making a difference. Every time we come together like this, we bring those imaginal selves together. Every single time we do this, we begin to create a bigger wave on this planet of unconditional love we affirm that unconditional love we affirm that we we are divine that we are the body of god so thank you for doing that mm -hmm. absolutely don't go away everybody because we've got a few more things um uh, we have a wonderful video of Louisa playing with Benj and others. We've got live music from Omushar. Um, and I really want to encourage this, this this beautiful coming together of two tribes. Um, and they've been coming together for a while, Shakti Love Warriors and the Global Peace Tribe. So for Shakti Love Warriors, please come to the Awakening World every weekend. Every weekend we do something very, very special. Um, and for our Global Peace Tribe, let's definitely make sure you've joined Larissa's Shakti Love Warriors. Um, and this is her Facebook page. Um, uh, and it's really easy. Just go and click join. Um, and every day, every day, like you think it's a lot that I do this every weekend. She does this every day. She and her tribe at 11 o'clock gather together and then at 11 11 drop through some form of meditation or sharing so it's a beautiful service you're providing larissa and your shakti love warriors each and every one of them is so beautiful whoever i'm listening to it's they're all just exquisite souls so thing. really uh, thank you they absolutely are our love warriors are amazing and our love warriors that have the courage to lead the group and lead the meditation um, throughout the week. I just am so grateful. It takes a, it does take courage to put yourself out there, to put your gifts out there and to share your wisdom in the world. And yet we find when we do share our wisdom that we get to receive our own wisdom at a deeper level. So that's a huge gift. When we share our gifts, we get to really receive our gifts. And then others 
are inspired to share theirs more. So I invite you to everyone here to come join in. And if you feel called to lead, there are spaces for you to lead too. So that's a huge piece of it as well. Well, it's interesting that you're talking about sharing gifts and receiving because we're now going to take a moment to really support Larissa Stowe to receive. Um, uh, I'm really grateful that Larissa has joined Patreon. And Patreon is a wonderful, wonderful way for us to support our favorite musical artists. Um, and actually not just musical artists. I support the Sign Network through Patreon. I support Becky Suzek, who's a teacher. This is a wonderful way for uh, Trish Wright um, is doing a Patreon. And what's nice about Patreon is it's a way that every month we make a monthly pledge. So that way people like Louisa know, oh wow, I've got however many patrons, and every month I can count on that little bit coming on in, or that a lot coming in. Um, and look, we all need to support each other. Uh, I think we all recognize we want to move away from supporting those large corporations that really don't care about us. Um, and really going to community support. So this is when you actually go to Larissa's Patreon page. Um, I'm really proud. I was one of the first people to join. Yes. Become, um, I think You're it's the first. You're a big first. supporter, Scott. You're a major supporter of us. Well, so appreciated. It is my pleasure. And what's wonderful is we, as patrons, we get to support Larissa or our other friends. But then we get goodies back, we get gifts back. And so Louisa makes new videos, so she includes us in her writing process. Tell us about some of what we'll be experiencing through your patron page in the upcoming upcoming months. Well, it's our it's our desire and our goal to include those who are really touched by the music and the messages that we're sharing with the world, um, who are who feel empowered, inspired, and uplifted by that to be even more part of our process. Meaning um, when we're writing music, when I'm creating new mantras, when we're writing songs for the band, that our patrons that are part of Patreon, um, you get to hear what we're doing before it gets out to the world. So you get to hear the different versions that it goes through before it gets to the full um the full share so to speak with the world and we wait to put things out on apple and and uh like itunes and spotify we save that we first share that with our patreon our patrons and then we share it with the full fan base and then so you get if you're a part behind the scenes you get to have an influence actually on what we bring forward and subtle shifts and artwork and all these pieces we consider you to be a part of our our family and our team for putting these messages out to the world so what most people don't realize is that there's a lot of costs incurred between the the emails and the production and mixing and mastering and and the world has really shifted it's shifted from artists you know we used to sell our cds and and tour and we'd make our money that way. And that gave us some money to produce and create more CDs. And now with CDs going obsolete and people going to streaming, artists get paid like not even, not even a cent when you listen to, when you stream a song, it's like 0 .00 something. So it's, it's really, really small what we get um, um, paid per stream. So this, we had to look at new way of, if we're going to continue to do what we do rather than just all the money going out and nothing ever coming back in again to involve our people. And it's for me, I wanted to speak to this on a bigger level rather than just myself. This is like a new time in the world to really look again at what are we seeding? Like what is feeding us? Like if what I'm doing and Benji's is doing and what our, what Shakti Love Warriors is doing, if that feeds people, then how the people that are getting fed, how can you um, nourish what's feeding you? So that continues to, to grow and to blossom and flourish. And 
looking at all places in our lives that that really grow who we are you know if you look at your day like where do you put your energy what is actually nurturing you within that day what is helping you to grow into a fuller version of who you are in this lifetime so for me it's like walking on the beach that's one of the things is sitting with ma at the ocean and one of the things I get to do is when I walk on the beach, I get to pick up trash and throw that trash away because I recognize that I have this relationship with Ma and I want her to flourish because she is giving to all of us and she gives to me very specifically and I can't imagine, you know, the world without our oceans and without our beaches and without all the animals in the ocean. So that's something that I'm really conscious about in giving back to the ocean. And farmers markets as opposed to, you know, buying our food from the corporate structure, it's like giving back to those farmers that are growing the food by going to local farmer's market that makes me so happy <laughs> to buy it straight from the ones who are actually putting their hands in the earth and and um, providing that food having a relationship not only with with um, giving them money but having a relationship even with them as human beings that they know that they make a difference so I look at this as an invitation and I invite you to feel into that in your own life of where are you planting seeds in your life with your thoughts and with where you take action in your life. What is really, really important to you? What grows who you are? Because that's the weevolution. That is truly the weevolution. It's like if we all look at our life in terms of what really nourishes me, what helps me to bloom, blossom, give my gifts in the world. And if we start to look at life in that way, rather than how we've been conditioned to look at it, then we can begin to really watch the things that we believe in, where our core values are. We can begin to see those totally blossom in life so i'm curious what where you all i'd love to hear from you all about what grows who you are <laughs> i'd love to hear that in the chat like did this like spark any thinking for you like on a day-to-day -day basis what are you fueled by and do you have like a, a strong connective tissue relationship with what gives to you uh, already comments are coming in um uh Manion writes chanting in a group helps me on her own rights complete road programming is happening here uh, a lot of our friends on unify uh joni writes so larissa has such a beautiful smile as she communicates and i agree i love that <laughs> smile um I want to invite everyone, uh, I'm going to play uh, an example of what you get to see when you are on her Patreon page. Uh, this is a video, it's short. And while I'm playing this video, I want to invite everybody to join the Shakti Love Warriors and to join her Patreon page. Please, please do that. So I've put um, into the chat box the link. I'm going to put it again one more time. Um, so it's going to be right at the top, and it's pretty well at the top for Unify, and it's now at the very top for our, our Zoom room friends. So please join while we enjoy this beautiful music from and her team, her Benj and others.
Scott. It looks like Scott froze a little bit there. Ah. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, everybody. That was my daughter, by the way, that was singing with me my daughter Aria. So <laughs> when you heard her singing J Ma, <laughs> that's, it has deeply personal, like touches my heart every time that kiddo makes me cry. She's now 21. When we did that uh, video a few years ago, actually, and I'm just releasing it now, but wow, so she's grown a little bit there. Oh, I enjoyed watching uh, Jules rocking out to uh, the music. It was beautiful. So sorry that I disappeared for about 10 seconds there, a little internet burp. Um, so thank you, Larissa, for being such a, such a gift, such a blessing. You're such an important part of the Awakening World and the Global Peace Tribe. Um, and it's always wonderful meeting all of your friends and now your cousin. My cousin. Thank you, Cuzzy. Yeah. yeah, she's awesome. She Thank is. you. We are going to have, um, Omushar is going to close us out with some music today. So anything else you'd like to share, Larissa, before I kind of go into a couple of announcements? Um, I just want to thank everybody, you know, that's here that is been to has been participating today and is really creating that wave on the planet this wave of love it really takes those of us who can do this to really stand powerfully in this right now because we're anchoring that vibration on the planet so i'm thank you so much to everyone here and george i saw i saw a message from george that said you had some problems getting to, into Shakti 
love voyeurs. So I'm going to see about that. I don't know what happened to you, George, but I'm going to go and see if I can invite you. Maybe that will work better. But usually we don't have a problem for people signing up. And we'd love to have you all. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Larissa. I love you very, very much. Thank you Thank so you, much. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for your love. Love you so much. And one last time, everybody, remember, I'm hoping that a lot of you registered um, and signed up for her Patreon page during the song. But if not, please do go there. Patreon.com, Larissa Stowe. Uh, there are all sorts of different membership levels. Let's give her our ongoing support. That's really, really important. So there she is. All right. I just want to invite people to a couple of other things. Um, you know, this afternoon, I'm doing a special event with my friend Eden Amadora. Those of you who are regulars have seen Eden, just like you've seen Larissa, you've seen Eden. And we're kind of completing this beautiful weekend of moving into the new spring season for those of us in Northern Hemisphere um, and autumn harvest time for those of you down under. And we're concluding it at two o'clock today. And so it's gonna be a Zoom meeting style. We are gonna make it very interactive. And there are two ways that you can participate. You can register directly, or um, we have opened up registration for our new season of The Awakening World. I am going to continue to do The Awakening World three shows every weekend, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and sometimes special shows as well. Um, oftentimes there's just too much, so we need even more time. And so we've opened up the registration for the new season. And for those of you who register uh, right away, and <laughs> like do it right away, we will include you in our um, new, in, in the show that we're gonna do this afternoon. So I am putting in the link to our chat box here of, here we go. That's where you can register. And I, I announced this last night um, on Saturday, on the Saturday night edition of the Awakening World, and it's beautiful how many people have registered. Uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of you registered last night, and the registrations have been still coming in this morning. So that feels really, really good. So please do join us. Um, and for Shakti Love Warriors, and for those of you watching on Unify, people that are new to the Awakening World, every weekend we tackle a theme. And as an example, uh, next weekend, it's kind of interesting what I chose to do. This weekend was all about new life, spring season. So next weekend, we're going to be talking about the other side of that, transforming and healing our relationship to death and to dying. And we have a really eclectic and interesting group of people. We've got um, uh, Yasmin Hanna coming to us all the way from Egypt, who's going to be sharing with us about some of the ancient rites of Egypt and how the Egyptians viewed death. We have um, a doctor coming to us from the Himalayas in India, who is going to talk about how he prepares his patients to die from a spiritual perspective as well as a physical perspective. Um, my co-host is going to be wonderful Kristen Hoffman, who of course will play music and sing and share her wisdom. And we've also invited Gary Malkin, who won a Grammy Award for his CD called Graceful Passages, which was all about music to help us deal with death and dying. Many other amazing people. We've got the world's foremost authority on green burials, Suzanne Kelly. She'll be on the Sacred Sunday show a week from today. And many, many others, including old friend Danyan Brinkley. We all love Danyan. He, of course, is the best-selling author, had the amazing near-death experiences, wrote about it. They made a movie about him. And many other friends and guests. Lisa Gar, Michael Tamura, Trish will be my co-host on Friday. Celestine Starr. So join us next weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning as we tackle that particular topic. And we have a lot of other wonderful topics we're going to be working with in the spring. Um, collaborations with evolutionary leaders, collaborating with the Relation Flicks, collaborating with the New Living Expo, 
Um, and we're even going to have a special anniversary show that I'm working with Deborah Juicy on. Um, that's going to be Easter weekend. So we have a lot of good things happening. Please do join us for The Awakening World, our new season. Um, and when you register, you'll get all the links for April, May, and June. Uh, for those of you that have already registered for this season that's wrapping up, you are going to use your previous links next weekend. And then April 1st is when we start with the new season. So there you go. There are some of the announcements for you. Look forward to seeing many of you, hopefully, this afternoon. And I am so grateful. You know, we meet many of you. Um, and an example of someone we met through the awakening world is Omushar. And Omushar has become be one of our beloveds. He plays music for us. He shares his wisdom. And so, Omushar, love to have you kind of conclude our our morning, our afternoon with some music. What a what an amazing honor. The Sacred Sunday is so sacred to me and um, uh, it's becoming more so. And, and Larissa, uh, every word that's come out of your mouth today has just lit me up. Um, I, I am so um, honored to know that there are other beings like us who um, um, are exemplifying spirit in this world. And for me, um, spirit is rocking, knocking, rocking my world, knocking uh, on my consciousness so heavily just to get out of the way and let spirit source in. And so this is, this, all, my, all my songs are either um, divine consciousness speaking to me or vice versa. And this is a song from divine consciousness to the human and it's called The Wonderful and the New. And it's basically get out of my way, let your guards down, let spirit in, you can trust me and we can walk forward together. And so that is kind of uh, where this one's at. And here we are. Um, Wonderful. Hopefully. Excited to hear you. Sorry? Uh, yay. <laughs> Excited to hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we hear you well.
So there it is. You caught me by surprise. It was a, a quick ending. <laughs> Uh, hey, everybody, you can find Omashar on YouTube, Instagram, uh, and also at omashar.com. And when you go to omashar.com, that shows you some of the different ways that you can connect with him. Um, so definitely, again, let's always support our artists. Um, Omashar, I hope I'll be seeing you maybe this afternoon. You will. Thank afternoon. you so much. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. Couple of last thoughts. Share this out. Let people know about Larissa's Shakti Love Warriors, her Patreon page, The Awakening World, um, and also hello to those of you watching the recording of this. Uh, we now have about I don't know forty percent of the people who end up watching this either watch this on our YouTube channel or watch the recording on Unify or on Facebook. So everybody is welcome, whether you're with us live or watching the recording. And then finally, remember. The, we can make any moment sacred by just choosing see, to see the divinity. Seeing the divinity is easy when we're looking at Larissa, but let's find that divinity when we're looking at ourself, or when we're looking at another, or maybe when we're looking at someone that we have judgment for. Finding that divinity, that's how we make the world sacred. That's how we create peace in our world. And I know that everybody watching right now wants more peace in their lives, and peace in the world. And we're all doing that together. We are the Global Peace Tribe. We are Shakti Love Warriors. We are waking up together. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. God's blessings.